Hello, hello, Sam here, back again. Sorry it's been a while. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint trees and lighting effects. And when I started this channel, I posted a few time lapse videos, and one of them was of me painting uh, this particular video where I was painting some trees in a valley in some evening light. And I'm pretty sure someone requested, could I show them or make a video on how to paint it? And I deleted the original footage. I don't know what I've done with it. But anyway, I thought, why not paint it again? And I'll show you how to paint it. Also felt I could improve the composition a little as well. So in this video, I'll show you how to paint trees and light. And as I say, it's a spring scene in Queenstown in New Zealand, just down the road from my art studio, actually. Um, I'll show you the colors and brushes I'm using, then the composition, then blocking in the painting, building up all the details and then adding the final details to finish the painting. Check the link below, there's some written notes there if you want to have a go at painting it and feel free to use the photos and copy the painting if you like. If you'd like to see the paintings I'm working on at the moment and my plein air painting adventures and other arty stuff, check out my Instagram profile. I update it pretty frequently and it's probably my favourite social media app so that's definitely the place to uh, see what I'm working on at the moment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. So down the road from my art studio in Queenstown, New Zealand where I live is this beautiful mountain valley. I quite frequently drive along this road and in the afternoon the light can be absolutely amazing. There was one afternoon when I was driving through here in spring and the afternoon sun had lit up the trees and I just loved all that tasty green foliage. So I thought I've got to get some photos of this so I pulled over and got my camera out and took these photos here. Now this video footage here of the valley with the willow trees in it was taken in early spring so the leaves were only just starting to come on the trees but you get the idea of some of the dramatic lighting effects that you get in this area. Once I gathered my photos I designed some compositions in my sketchbook. The design of this composition I'm using is known as a steel yard composition and is one of the simplest compositions. So it's characterised by having a large mass at one end that's then balanced by a smaller mass. You can think of it as a large mass balanced on a bar that's then counterbalanced by a smaller weight at the other end of the bar. So in this case the large mass is the big willow tree here in the foreground and the smaller masses are the willow trees and the two conifers in the background. One of my favourite artists, Edgar Payne, often used this composition in his paintings. You should definitely go and check out his work, just google his name. His artworks are amazing and they definitely influence my paintings. I'm using oil paint to create this artwork, but you can also use acrylics as well. The colours I'm using include titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue and phthalo green. The brushes I'm using include a number 6 flat, a number 2 flat, a number 2 filbert and a number 1 round. So not many brushes at all. I'm working on a 40 cm by 50 cm canvas which I prepared with a layer of burnt sienna and this just helps to warm up the painting and helps with the establishment of colour and tone. Using a number one round brush, I sketch out the composition with just burnt sienna mixed with liquid. Now you might notice those lines down there, they just help me to place focal points and it's kind of similar to the rule of thirds. Once I've sketched out the composition, I wipe off those lines with a rag soaked in a bit of terps just so it doesn't come through the painting later on. Now I'm a fan of using big flat brushes and here I'm using a number 6 flat brush. It helps me to cover ground quickly and I start by painting the highlights of the clouds. So I'm starting with the sky first of all and I'm going to use the sky to gauge the tonality and the values of the rest of the painting. 
At this stage I'm just using straight titanium white from the tube mixed with liquid. But then as I add my cloud shadows I mix a little ultramarine blue with a bit of burnt sienna which just takes out some of the saturation of the blue. And then I tint it with a little quinacridone magenta and also add lots of titanium white. Next I move on to the sky which is just a mixture of ultramarine blue, a tiny bit of phthalo green and titanium white. The sky tonally has the lightest values in the painting and now I've just established that I'm moving on to the mountains in the distance. These are slightly darker in value. And what do I mean by value? It's basically how light or dark a colour is. Now the painting will be more harmonious if I use common colours throughout the painting. So I'm using the same colours I used in the clouds for the mountains but less titanium white to darken the value. Using a more limited palette will also help to keep your painting more harmonious and the colours more cohesive. You don't actually need that many colours. I continue on to paint the shadows in the mountains and as Cecil Peak is a bit closer the shadows are going to be tonally darker so I'm still using my same mountain mix but using less titanium white. At this stage in the painting, now that the sky is blocked in, I'm now trying to establish all my shadows first of all, and then I'll return to the areas that are in light. Here I'm painting these shadows in the grass, which is just a combination of ultramarine blue with a little yellow oxide and titanium white. I can also add a bit of quinacridone magenta if the green mix is a bit too saturated. Using a number 6 flat brush I block in the shadows in the willow tree in the foreground. Trees in general in a landscape painting usually have some of the darkest values. Aside from the tree trunks of the foreground willow tree, the next darkest values in the painting are the shadows in the conifer trees and I mix this with a combination of ultramarine blue, yellow oxide and burnt sienna. Now that I've established all my shadows in the painting, I turn to the areas that are in light. So going back to the mountain, I start blocking this in with a number 6 flat brush. I'm using the same colours I used in the shadow mix of the mountains, which is ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, quinacridone magenta and titanium white. But I'm using more titanium white and also introducing a bit of yellow oxide to give it that golden appearance in the light. I block in the grass with a number 6 flat brush, keeping in mind that the value needs to be light. I mix the green with a combination of ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, then I also introduce yellow oxide and burnt sienna as well as titanium white. I can even add a bit of cadmium orange just to make the mixture look a bit more natural and organic. Now green is a pretty tricky colour to work with and you may have to play around with the mixtures. It's also a colour that doesn't travel well over long distances, so if you find your green is too bright in the distance you can desaturate it and knock it back by adding its opposite, so usually a colour that contains red, red being the opposite to green on the colour wheel. Next I start adding the areas of the foliage of the willow tree that are in light, and I'm pretty much using the same colour that I used in the grass. In general trees are tonally darker than grass but in this case one thing I've noticed with willow trees especially in spring is the foliage is quite light in value and can be a similar value to the grass so this is why I've pretty much used the same colour. In order to build the form of the tree I start adding some darker shades of green and I'm still using the same colours but I'm just varying the combinations and this just adds texture and interest to the tree. I mark in the basic form of the tree trunks and branches of the willow tree using a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Once I've painted the willow trees I then turn my attention to the conifer trees in the background. The foliage is darker in value and the green is not anywhere near as saturated as the willow trees so I mix a combination of ultramarine blue, yellow oxide and burnt sienna to give it that earthy green hue. If required I can also lighten the tone by adding some titanium white.
Now that the blocking in stage is complete and the painting is dry, I can start adding detail. At this stage I'm still using number 6 flat brushes as I prefer that painterly style, but I'll be using smaller brushes as I add more detail. I add highlight to the clouds by mixing titanium white with a little yellow oxide and burnt sienna. I'm modelling the paint and refining the forms. I then start mixing in cloud shadows and I'm using the same colours that I used in the blocking stage. I felt that the mountains in the background were tonally a little too dark so I decided to lighten the tone and repaint them. I still use the same colours that I used in the blocking in phase which includes ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, quinacridone magenta and titanium white and then for the highlights I use these same colours but adding also yellow oxide. By lightening the tone and desaturating the colour a little more I can make that recede further into the background which will emphasise the trees more. Using a number 2 filbert brush and my shadow mix I start marking in the jagged edges of the rock faces in the distant mountain. Filbert brushes are great because you can still get broad marks with them but the rounded edge also means you can make finer marks with them also. I return to the conifer trees in the midground, and I start refining the forms and shapes of the crowns. I'm still using the same colour combination that I used in the blocking in phase which includes ultramarine blue, yellow oxide, burnt sienna and titanium white and I'm just creating marks that generally go in the direction that the foliage would naturally be, so mostly horizontal marks. I then apply a similar technique to the willow tree and paint the foliage in the direction that it's naturally growing. Now for the rest of the video I'm just going to be focusing on the willow tree and the grass and it brings me to the subjects of painting greens. Now green is probably the colour I have most difficulty with when painting landscapes. If you get them right they can look amazing, if you get them wrong they can look completely unnatural and form a massive distraction in your painting. It's also very easy to end up with colour that's too saturated and when you're in this situation you can risk losing the depth dynamic of your painting. So as with the blocking phase I'm still starting with a basic mix of cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. Then I can alter the hue or the value by adding colours such as yellow oxide or cadmium orange or quinacridone magenta and titanium white. It's always a good idea to make your greens look a bit more organic and natural and you can do this by adding a colour that contains red, it's colour opposite on the colour wheel. So this could include quinacridone magenta, cadmium orange or burnt sienna. If it's too saturated, adding any of these colours will knock it back and reduce the saturation. If I was painting a green that was in the distance, I probably wouldn't use cadmium yellow at all as it's too saturated, and would probably use something that's chromatically less intense, like yellow oxide for example. I'm generally painting the grass in the direction that it's growing, so upwards and downward strokes, and then some horizontal marks just to add texture to it. I want the shadow of the grass to be less saturated so I'll add more ultramarine blue and more of a colour opposite such as quinacridone magenta or burnt sienna. And now to work on the willow tree. In the blocking in phase I generally divided the tree into a dark and light mass and now it's time to build up the detail onto it. Green is generally regarded as a cool colour and in this tree I've got my cool greens in the shadows and then I've got some warmer greens which form the highlight. At this stage I'm still using a number 6 flat brush but I'm starting to mark definite zones of where I'll be painting the foliage. I have to bear in mind that there will be some reflected light in the shadow areas of this tree. I'm still using the same colour combinations that I used to create the grass but more so in places adding a little phthalo green just to increase the saturation. As I model the paint on this tree, I'll be adding lighter tone with each progressive layer. 
Next I work on the highlights of the trees and I'm switching it up by using smaller brushes. So in this case I'm using a number two flat brush. I'm starting to make finer marks to give the illusion of the sunlight shining through the foliage. I'm still using a mixture of cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, titanium white as my base. I'm using much less ultramarine blue and I'm also adding a little cadmium orange or burnt sienna just to make that green look more earthy. The tree took a while to paint and it really just involved building up successive layers and adding lighter tone with each pass. Whilst I was essentially using the same colours to mix the greens I was varying the combinations to create different hues as this adds texture and interest to the tree. I'm now using a combination of number two flat brushes and number two filberts and I'm painting smaller marks to give the illusion of clumps of leaves and feathering the foliage at the ends. And as with the tree, I'm also building up lighter texture and tone on the grass, especially in the shadow areas. And I'm mainly using a number two flat brush. I'll just quickly focus your attention on these small poplar trees here. You'll notice the hue of the green is different. I added a little phthalo green to my existing green mix and this really kicks up the saturation and you can get some really nice tasty greens with it. But be careful with using phthalo green because it's a very strong colour and it will quickly overpower your mixture if you're not careful. Now I've painted a splendid crop of leaves on the willow tree, it's time to start making it look more like a tree by adding in some branches. I'm using a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and I'm painting the main scaffold branches with a number two filbert brush. Once those branches are in, I'll then paint some foliage over it so it blends into the tree. I paint the highlights of the branches with a combination of burnt sienna, titanium white and if required ultramarine blue. I can also add just to warm it up either some yellow oxide or cadmium yellow but you'll only need a small amount of this. At this point in the painting it's now coming to a finish and I'm just adding final details. I'm saving my lightest values in the willow tree until the end. I'm using a number one round brush to add a few more individual leaves on top of the existing ones I've already painted, which gives it more form and depth. I add the suggestion of grasses and small bushes in the midground of the painting. And then I finish off the painting by adding some sheep. The shadows of the sheep are mixed with a combination of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and titanium white and the highlights are painted with a mixture of titanium white, burnt sienna and yellow oxide. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it took a while for me to upload it, but rest assured uh, I shall be continuing to make more videos for you, so don't worry, stay tuned. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget the links below to the written notes that accompany this video. Also, check out my social media sites as well. Instagram, obviously, one of my favorites. Also on Facebook, Twitter, and blockchain-based ones such as Steemit and Minds as well. So you can follow me there also. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.